This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We are here for you. Good evening, I'm Jacqueline Matter. Thanks for joining us tonight. First, a tropical disturbance is forming and might ruin some plans for the weekend. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with what we should expect. Bob? Well, Jackie, we are looking at this system uh, not very well organized at this point. Uh, it's uh, kind of unusual. And we have a little area of low pressure just to the east of Orlando tonight. And then what appears to be a little low off the uh, coast of Naples with uh, some bigger storms well down south of Cuba right now. You see this big area flaring up right here. This is where the heaviest rainfall is and the biggest storms at this hour. But we also have some activity going on along the east coast of Florida. So poorly organized, a broad area of low pressure. It's not going to uh, get its act together anytime soon either. So it's going to take a while as it possibly moves off toward the north and then eventually off toward the west. The chances of it developing right now for the National Hurricane Center gives it only a 40% chance, which is uh, fairly high, but uh, not extreme at this point. A 40% chance developing into a tropical depression or possibly a tropical storm. The next name storm would be Nate at this point, but uh, I'm not anticipating anything too significant at this juncture. And you can see uh, this particular forecast graphic is showing the low pressure area, at least a little surface low, right to the east and southeast of Orlando. Some of the models taking it off to the north and then eventually off toward the west. It kind of loops back and gets beat up by some strong shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So this one does not appear to be going to be a strong one at this point if it were to develop at all. We're also watching this area in the eastern Caribbean, which unfortunately is moving over Puerto Rico again. Uh, it is not developing into a big windstorm, but a heavy rainmaker it will be. And unfortunately, they don't need any more rain there in Puerto Rico and eventually on into uh, Dominican Republic as well as Haiti over the next several days. This, uh, by the way, has a 20% chance developing over the next five days. So not much because there's an upper level low uh, out ahead of it, which will inhibit it from uh, developing into too, uh, anything too significant at this point. But we'll watch this. A lot of moisture will be in place regardless if it develops or it doesn't. We are going to see some moderate to heavy rainfall here at times, not entire, not entire day rain, but uh, still scattered showers and numerous thunderstorms coming later in the afternoon and evening on Saturday. We'll have the complete weekend weather forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. With the threat of two tropical disturbances affecting the Sun Coast, what will it mean for the weekend finals of the World Rowing Championships? ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo is here to explain their plans. Dwayne? Well, Jackie, I'm sure you remember the Hurricane Irma posing a potential problem before the start of the event, but organizers say they've done the necessary groundwork to make sure this weekend's events goes on as planned. Sarasota's emergency operation and its chief, Ed McCrane, have been an integral part in the planning process of the World Rowing Championships, but it's Mother Nature that may cause concerns. Not sure what we're going to expect. A lot of it's going to depend on which way it goes. World Rowing Championship Director of Operations, Russ Yerk, says it's this type of weather they're prepared for. We've tried to address every contingency uh, from a hurricane down to, you know, a drizzle or a lightning storm and how we would adjust and handle those situations. Also taking advantage of good weather throughout the week as a precaution. We tweaked our competition schedule this week, moved a few events uh, from Saturday morning to Friday so we can accelerate the competition schedule and hopefully beat the rain that may come in later Saturday afternoon. So we've actually been able to, to get the competition uh, completed. All of our guests and spectators have left the venue and really it's just impacted the afternoon training sessions. But throughout the weekend's competition, it could be lightning or wind that can alter schedules. And there's a certain level of wind that the rowers can row through. Um, once you hit a certain threshold, it becomes unsafe for the rowers and they'll delay competition until those winds die down. Yerk saying organizers are prepared and so are the athletes. We hope that it's just a, a nice weekend. Uh, the weather doesn't affect it too much. They get to finish out the competition. Don't just assume because it might be raining at your home that the races are going to be canceled. Now officials for the championships urges those coming out to the races this weekend to stay in tune with the organization's social media feeds for updates on, updates on schedules that may have been changed due to weather. Jackie, back to you. All right, thank you, Duane. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is trying to find a convicted felon. Angel Panero Melendez is wanted for battery and grand theft auto. He's described as a Hispanic male, five foot seven, with brown eyes and a shaved head and brown beard. His last known address is in Orlando. The stolen vehicle that he may be driving is a 2005 Dodge Dakota truck. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office.
And the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and Sarasota Police Department offering a reward of $6,000 for information leading to the recovery of Jabez Span. The 14 year old has been missing since September 4th. He was last seen in the area of 22nd Street in Sarasota wearing a turquoise shirt. He's a black male, 5 foot 9 and weighs 120 pounds. In addition to that reward money, the Florida Outdoor Advertising Association is donating digital billboard space in Sarasota County. Anyone with information is being asked to call the tip line at 941-366-TIPS. Well, the Northport Police Department is cracking down on speeding. In 2017, Northport Police have responded to issues along I-75 in the city nearly 350 times. NPPD is now teaming up with the Florida Highway Patrol for increased enforcement. Residents will see more marked and unmarked patrol vehicles along the stretch for the near future. FEMA is helping those temporarily displaced by Hurricane Irma by offering to pay for local hotel visits, but one man on the Sun Coast says finding a place to stay has been difficult. Tim Friedenberg had to leave one hotel to make room for World Rowing Championship reservations and says others are either at capacity or won't allow his dog Ginger to stay in a room. He spent the last three days in his RV, which he says is damaged from the storm and also without air conditioning. I started getting upset about it, not for me, but I started thinking about families that have little kids. Uh, it seems to me that if you're going to help anybody, it would be in your own hometown. Friedenberg says FEMA's website has been a bit misleading at times, listing some non-participating hotels by mistake and labeling others pet friendly when that's not the case. And speaking of FEMA, representatives are in Sarasota this weekend. They're stationed at the Robert L. Taylor Community Complex to help people register for individual disaster assistance after Hurricane Irma. The FEMA program offers assistance to those whose homes were damaged as a result of Irma. Representatives will be available from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. until Wednesday, October 4th, excluding Sunday. You can also register online or by phone. Thanks to a generous grant, Sarasota's All Faiths Food Bank is getting back on track following Hurricane Irma. With a $172,000 grant from the Charles and Marjorie Baransic Foundation, All Faiths can now continue to get food and water to those still recovering from the storm. As the storm hit the Sun Coast, grocery store shelves emptied. All Faiths faced the challenge of replacing lost items that are normally provided by stores. This grant helps replenish nearly two weeks worth of food. But the Food Bank of Manatee still needs help restocking its shelves after Hurricane Irma. A community-wide event is happening Sunday, October 1st from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. at all Manatee County Publix locations. They're asking for a number of critically needed items to stuff the bus with 125,000 pounds of food. And One Blood also asking for blood donors this Sunday. Hurricane Irma forced One Blood to suspend local operations for three days. And as a result, there's an urgent need to replenish the area's blood supply. The 9-11 Remembrance Blood Drive, originally scheduled for September 10th, was obviously postponed due to Hurricane Irma. Now they have an additional mission. All donors will receive a t-shirt and a wellness checkup, including blood pressure, temperature, iron count, pulse, and cholesterol screening. The blood drive will be at Roser Church on Anna Maria Island. You can register for a time slot by calling the church or stopping by and looking for the big red bus in their parking lot. Straight ahead, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. Plus, families fleeing Puerto Rico and coming to Florida will have one less thing to worry about when it comes to feeding their children. And O.J. Simpson plans to return to Florida after he's released from prison. Why the Attorney General doesn't want him coming back. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. 
Studies show that Predoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Predoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Do you have type 2 diabetes, which requires daily blood monitoring? If you have diabetes, are you on Medicare, Obamacare, or other health insurance? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for diabetic testing supplies at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you. Our accredited staff will handle all of your paperwork for free. And best of all, your diabetic testing supplies are shipped directly to your home for free. Call now to see if you qualify for a meter upgrade and a free pedometer to monitor your daily walking. Use alternate testing sites, a smaller blood sample, and even hear your results out loud. Will you qualify for diabetic testing supplies at an upgraded meter? covered by Medicare, Obamacare, or health insurance at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you? Find out for free by calling the Diabetes Resource Center at 1-800-394-1098. That's 1-800-394-1098. 1-800-394-1098. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Well, some activity going on in the tropics, it right. looks like. It seems like it's been uh, ongoing since uh, day one. Well, you know, of course. It, it ends on November 30th, and hopefully uh, before that, uh, we don't see many storms. Uh, we're nice. watching this one. It's not too intense, and it doesn't appear that it will be either as a result of some stronger winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which will more than likely not allow it to get going. So uh, this one doesn't look to be too bad. The next one, though, we're, we're, we're looking at some long-range forecasts. Could be a, a player down the road. We'll talk more about that next week. We don't have to worry about it this week. Uh, this is a nice shot right here. There was some clouds in the atmosphere, a few showers around. Susanna Krebs getting this one, sending it in to pics at mysuncoast.com. We appreciate that nice photo. And as far as the uh, temperatures go, the fall-like weather is over the northeast and throughout the Great Lakes. We're going to eventually get some of that cooler weather our way, but not right now. So uh, that is not going to happen at this point. Let's go and show you again uh, what's happening as far as our weather is concerned. The overall radar picture indicate some showers and storms around, but mainly to the east of us. That's where the heavy weather is, although we're still getting some light rainfall. But notice that trail of moisture extends all the way down through the Florida Straits and down toward Cuba. Although it appears that this is the low pressure area that has kind of formed right now and it's moving off to the north, I still suspect that we'll get this trail of moisture, at least a trough of low pressure, into our area on Saturday, which will bring us and enhance our showers and storms, mainly in the afternoon and evening now with the uh, scattered activity in the morning hours. So all in all, the trend has been for these uh, heavier storms to wind down here and to increase uh, near Cape Canaveral as it makes its way to the north. Now, as far as the uh, moderate rainfall goes near Northport, Port Charlotte, all the way to Punta Gorda, and then places down to the south, some pretty big storms out there uh, just to the north and west of Key West. And You'll notice the motion, and it's moving to the north at around 10 to 15 miles an hour. We kind of project this in our direction, so it'll be around Saturday. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we will see a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the morning with a better chance for some heavier rain in the afternoon and evening. They're getting some moderate rain, as I mentioned, in Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda, and Northport right now. The enhanced satellite imagery showing quite a bit of clouds and storms now making their way through the Leeward Islands, also this area here in the Western Caribbean. This is the favorite area for development, too. We start to see more and more storms in the latter half of the season develop in the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. But right now, 
with this upper level feature spinning right here, this upper level low, uh, so close to this uh, line of low pressure, if you will, it's not going to allow it to develop as a result of the shear in place. And there's also an upper level low here, which is kind of inhibiting this system from developing as well. So the chances of it forming over the weekend for us is at 40%. And the current temperature now is 77 degrees. The wind's out of the east-southeast. Very light at 3. The pressure is at 29.98 inches. That's actually been rising for us throughout the last few hours. The high today was 89, and the low this morning was 74. 94, the record set back in 1921. Well, the rainfall for the month, uh, well above average, nearing 5 inches above average. Tomorrow's forecast, a few scattered showers in the forecast in the morning, and a little bit more act activity in the afternoon and evening tomorrow as a result of that tropical moisture in play. Well, there goes uh, Maria and Lee. They're kind of merging together off into the open waters of the Atlantic. Not a big concern there. And then, of course, this uh, re residual moisture left over down south. Keep an eye on that as well. As far as the winds go, 60 mile an hour for Maria and 60 miles an hour for Lee. Uh, the same, and they're both tropical storms out there. Well, as I mentioned, fall has returned over the Great Lakes. One of these days, we're going to see a big cold front move on through and cool us down, but that isn't going to happen for the next seven days at least. And uh, Washington 64, Phoenix at 88 degrees. For boaters tomorrow, you'll have to dodge some showers around. We'll have a light chop on the bays and inland waters. Water temperature now at 86 degrees. High tide upcoming, 1044. We just had that, I should say. Low tide will be at 326 and another high at 834 tomorrow morning. Mostly cloudy, scattered showers mainly. There could be a few isolated thunderstorms. And there's still the possibility of some moderate to heavy rainfall. And then tomorrow, look for a mixture of sun and clouds, a high of 88. Showers and storms scattered about in the morning, more numerous in the afternoon. The extended forecast, calling for a pretty good bet for scattered storms on Sunday as well. Right on in through Tuesday, then some dry air slips in on Wednesday. So not a total washout. Uh, but we could see uh, some showers around. Jacqueline? All right, thank you, Bob. More than a week has passed since Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico. Millions are still without power, and some areas are in desperate need of aid. John Lawrence has more. Devastated and desperate. That's the situation for millions of people in Puerto Rico. This is no way to live, really. They should bring us water, other supplies, because the kids keep asking. Most residents are still without power, and many others don't have basic necessities. You can't get them there overnight, because uh, you know, because you got to either get them there by boat or you got to get them by uh, by plane. FEMA officials say they have handed out almost one million meals so far, but thousands of packages haven't been delivered yet. Stuck on the island's largest port because of a lack of drivers and vehicle fuel. The frustration of knowing that maybe right now, right now, there's a person in need of, of, the, of medicine. That right now, babies, children don't have a water, a bottle of water. And it's here. It's in Puerto Rico. On Thursday, the White House authorized a temporary waiver of the Jones Act, which will allow more ships to bring supplies to the island. As for recovery efforts, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers vows to rebuild Puerto Rico's infrastructure, and area hospitals are attending to the sick and injured. We have to triage patients, we have to triage logistical needs, and we have to prioritize their delivery so that we can make sure that we sustain lives in an achievable, bite-sized way. I'm John Lawrence reporting. With the devastation in Puerto Rico, many families are relocating to Florida to prepare for the arrival of those evacuees. The Florida Commissioner of Agriculture is reminding schools that Puerto Rican students displaced by Hurricane Maria will get free school meals. Federal laws allow students and households evacuating a designated disaster area access to free school meals with the National School Lunch Program. After a firestorm over his travel, the Health and Human Services Secretary has resigned. This comes as a fourth cabinet secretary is under investigation for taking pricey private charters and government flights. ABC's Serena Marshall is in Washington with the latest. A 13th Trump administration official is out of a job. This time, Health and Human Today, Services Secretary Tom Price resigning following revelations he racked up more than $400,000 in two dozen chartered flights on the taxpayer's dime. The president today not hiding his displeasure. I didn't like it, cosmetically or otherwise. Uh, I was disappointed. Price had agreed to pay back the government, but only for the cost of his seat. 
Was, was 50, he's paying back $52,000 and the plane's cost? No, that's $50. unacceptable. Is that enough? No, that's, uh, no, that would be unacceptable. Price's resignation comes as secretaries Steve Mnuchin from Treasury and EPA Director Scott Pruitt also being investigated for their travel. And now a fourth and fifth cabinet official's travel is being added to the list. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, defiant. I'd just like to address, in the words of uh, General Schwarzkopf, a little BS uh, on travel. Defending his chartered flights for domestic travel, admitting to three since his confirmation, totaling $12,000. And Veterans Affairs Secretary David Shulkin, the Washington Post reporting taxpayers paid for him and his wife to fly to Europe for a work trip where they also attended Wimbledon and took in the sights. Just a month ago, Shulkin sent this memo to employees, warning of travel costs, writing, I expect this will result in decreased employee travel and generate savings. The director of the Office of Management and Budget writing a letter to the heads of all federal agencies, reminding them every dime they spend is the taxpayers. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. Well, here in Florida, the attorney general does not want O.J. Simpson returning to the Sunshine State. Pam Bondi says that Florida objects to Simpson serving his parole here. But Simpson's attorney says there's no doubt he's going to Florida. Bondi listed the two murders for which Simpson was found civilly liable as reasons to reject his relocation. She also noted a history of violence and destructive behavior. Florida corrections officials have said in the past that they must accept the transfer if Nevada's request meets the established criteria. Well, sports is next, but first, here's Jimmy Kimmel. Here's something from us to you. Oh, right. Just, just you already, the animals hello, are out of control. Hello, hello everybody. <laughs> you're all right, you're all right. Are you leaving? <laughs> the following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Every week on Animal Outtakes, it's a new animal adventure. hospital dedicated strictly to helping sea turtles. How this facility is making a difference in life of one of the oldest creatures on earth. And why are some breeds of dogs considered a protector or guard dog breed? We'll take a look at what goes on into owning one. Join us this week on ABC7. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her. Don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Monday on ABC7 News at 7. It's against the law to do it. Uh, and we enforce the law. We don't. We don't violate it. And uh, it, it makes it makes no sense for anybody to have a quota. The departments don't benefit from that kind of thing. Ticket quotas are illegal. Then once with an email from a senior state trooper requiring officers to ride two tickets an hour. I'm Alan Cohn, ordering you to pull over to the trapezoid. 
Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. The ABC 7 First Alert Hurricane Guide arms you with vital information to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Sun Coast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit. Visit mysuncoast.com and download yours today. Now, sports. The Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Baltimore Orioles tonight at Tropicana Field. There's a weird play here. Cesar Pueyo hits a high pop up and comes down in fair territory. Orioles manager Buck Showalter wants an explanation. Now two batters later, bases loaded once again for Daniel Robertson. 3-2 pitch, Miley walks Robertson with no place to put him in Cuello scores. Braves up 2-0. Bottom of the fifth, nobody on and Evan Longoria is up. He smacks it to deep left field and scores a home run. That's Longoria's 20th home run of the season and it's his ninth season with at least 20 home runs. The Rays go on to win the series opener 7-0. Well, the latest on the corruption scandal in college basketball, Louisville coach Rick Pitino says he was unaware of any payments to recruits, but takes responsibility for his decisions. Pitino issued a written statement to the Cardinals flagship radio station for distribution to local media. Soon after, former player David Padgett was introduced today as an interim replacement. The Hall of Famer thanked players from his three most recent schools and said he owes an apology for the disappointment that they have. And most high school football games were played last night here on the Sun Coast, but a couple teams still, did still play tonight. The Bradenton Christian Panthers beat the Gateway Griffins 23-6, and the Calvary Christian Warriors beat Cardinal Mooney tonight 19-16. That's a look at sports. We'll have tonight's winning lotto number straight ahead. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that you know you as a 15 year old 16 year old can't really make a difference it's not always about you it's not just one person it's it's a group it's a team just that simple act is transforming someone else's life it's one of the best feelings in the world it'll just make you feel so good about yourself i'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. 
the ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. Download yours today. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Well, plenty of big events here on the Sun Coast this weekend, the World Rowing Championship, right. and the weather could be a bit iffy. Yeah, and I talked to some of them over there, and they said that the, the championships will be in the morning, at least okay. in the morning hours, and hopefully uh, we'll get our afternoon and evening storms in a little bit more. Uh, that'll, that'll be a, the, the, the uh, saving part of it. Yeah, if it, that's if good it comes news. late in the day as opposed <laughs> to the morning during the big races. We are looking at rainfall right now on the radar down to our south. There's still a lot of moisture that's going to be around. So regardless of whether we actually get a low developing, it looks like one may be forming off the east coast right now, we're still going to get a, a, some pretty good showers. All right. All right. Well, have a good night.